Hi there, welcome back to chapter one, section four, proportional and non-proportional relationships. We're gonna be starting on textbook page 34 and going through textbook page 36. This is the seventh grade curriculum. So I've also included the easy peasy lemon squeezy icon because I think this section is gonna be a piece of cake for you. The things that you need to have with you are the usual things. You're gonna to need to have your lined paper because you're gonna be writing all the notes that you see me write. You also wanna have your hardback textbook so that you can follow along at the same time that I'm teaching. And also you wanna have your pencil with an eraser to do the got it problems so that you can erase easily if you have to change some things. Your colored pencils to accentuate the important things and headphones if you're in a distracting location. Also, you wanna make sure you bring your positive math attitude because you can do it. Let's go ahead and get started. So firstly, you'll see here we're on textbook page 34. So it says identify proportional relationships. You wanna head your paper 7.1.4, proportional and non-proportional relationships. And then also you wanna have your textbook page 34 and your name, date, and period. So now we're gonna see the first two words here are gonna be um, vocabulary words. And proportional quantities mean they have a constant ratio or unit rate, meaning the same. And remember, a unit rate has a bottom denominator of one. So we have the cost of order, and then we have pizzas ordered. So we have our first example here with pizzas and the total bill, basically. And I just added number of pizzas ordered because I think that makes it a little easier to understand. Now you're gonna see that we have eight to one. So the bill is $8 if we order one pizza. It's $16 if we order two pizzas, $24 for three, 32 for four, and 40 for five. So now what we need to do is we have established the relationship of $8 per pizza. It is proportional, and we support that with equivalent ratios. So it's the equivalent ratios all have the same value when they're reduced or simplified. So now, whoops, one second, we're back one too far. Sorry about that, I jumped forward a little too quickly. So now you can see that whenever you simplify all of these fractions, 16 over two, 24 over three, they all equal eight to one or eight. So now we're gonna move on to example number one. The information that you were given is that he makes $18 per hour mowing. So you wanna set up a table. The earnings are gonna go on the top and the hours are gonna go on the bottom. The reason you know the hours are gonna go on the bottom is because you're gonna find out how much money he makes per one hour. Because remember, everything has to be, everything has to reduce or simplify down to a unit rate of having one over it. So now we're gonna write the table, we're gonna fill the table in, 18 to one, 13, I'm sorry, 36 to two, 54 to three, and 72 to four. Now we're gonna set each one of these up as a ratio um, and then reduce it. And as you can see here, 36 over two would give us 18, 54 over three is 18, and 72 over four is 18. So the answer to our problem, the explain portion, which is gonna be very important because this is the part that a lot of you like to skip, the amount of money he earns is proportional to the number of hours he spends mowing because all ratios equal 18. You wanna just go ahead and add a little explain bubble off to the left like I've done here. Now you wanna go ahead and pause to do the got it problem. So go ahead and pause your video now and you wanna do the got it problem as you see it set up. Don't forget to pull out the important information. Welcome back. All right, so the first thing that you needed to write here was that there are two homeroom teachers per 48 students. That was the information in the problem. Then you have 48 to two equals 24 to one. So since the ratio is constant, the number of students to teachers is proportional. So the word here is constant, the main important word. So you can, so you can go ahead and underline that word constant because that's the important word here. And they give you basically the proportional relationship up front from the beginning. Now you wanna be looking at textbook page 35. On textbook page 35, you can see example two. It says Uptown Tickets charges $7 per baseball game ticket plus a $3 processing fee order. The cost of an order, I'm sorry, is the cost of an order proportional to the number of tickets ordered? Explain. So the first thing we want to do is pull out the information. I put a box around the $7 per game ticket and the $3 processing fee per order. And then I've underlined pieces of the question so that I remember exactly how many answers I need to have. Because a lot of you do forget to do the explain, so you wanna make sure you pull that out. So go ahead and write info, and then you're gonna write $7 per ticket plus $3 processing fee. So that's important. Then you wanna make yourself a table. Um, costs per dollars, and then the number of tickets. Then you wanna fill it in. Now I want you to notice, so right now, if I buy one ticket, which I wrote in purple, then the cost is gonna be the $7 per ticket plus the $3 processing fee. So that's how I get the $10. Now for the two tickets, 
you have to keep in mind that you have the 7 plus 7, which equals 14, plus 3 gives you 17. So notice how for two tickets I have 17. I do want you to fill the table out and write the information just above like I have done here. Then you're going to do the same for three tickets. 7 plus 7 plus 7 is 21, plus 3 is 24. And then 7 plus 7 plus 7 is 28, 29, 30, 31. And then I went ahead and did one more for 5, and that's $38. So now we're going to go ahead and put all those, write all of those as ratios, and we're going to simplify them. So as you can see here, I have simplified 10 over 1 to 10. Then 17 divided by 2, when I divide the top and the bottom by 2, I get 8.5 to 1. So notice I've done the division over there on the side. You can just use the calculator. That's totally fine. Then 24 to 3 obviously simplifies to 8. And then 31 to 4 simplifies or um, divides out to be 7.75 to 1. Now I did go ahead and erase that last example so that you didn't have to go further than the book has gone. So as you can see, each one of these has a different unit rate. So we have a unit rate of 10 to 1, 8.5 to 1, and then we have a unit rate again of 8 to 1, and then 7.75 to 1. I went ahead and changed them all to blue, all the unit rates so that you could see. So we have 10 to 1, 8.5 to 1, 8 to 1, and 7.75 to 1. Now before I go on and I give you the explanation, I want you to think about that for a second. Why is the unit rate or the cost per ticket going down as we buy more tickets? Well, think about it. It's because you have a $3 processing fee. That $3 processing fee is a flat fee. So you want to make a little note here for yourself that that is a flat fee, meaning it's only charged one time. It's not charged per ticket. So what that means is as you buy more tickets, that fee gets less per ticket. So if only one person is going, they have to pay the whole $3 processing fee by themselves. But if two people are going, then they share that processing fee. So each ticket would only be a $1.50 processing fee, if that makes sense. So that's why this is not going to be a proportional relationship. So the explain that you're gonna see here, you wanna write explain in a bubble, and then you wanna write since the ratios of the two quantities are not the same, the cost of an order is not proportional. So I've also, um, not proportional to the number of tickets purchased or number of tickets ordered. So I've also outlined the important words here in red. So you definitely wanna be using your colored pencils or pens to outline the important words here. These are all parts of a good explanation that you need to have to get full credit for your answers. So now you can see here that we have example three. All right, so example three says to use, you can use a recipe shown to find, I'm sorry, to make a fruit punch. Is the amount of sugar used proportional to the amount of mix used? Explain. So the first thing that you want to do is go ahead and make a table. So let's do that now. All right, so now you're going to see that you have cups of sugar on the top and you have envelopes of mix on the bottom. So it said that you should have one half cup of sugar for every one envelope of mix. And, that, and you're also going to have two cups of water. So right now we're going to have the one half cup sugar, one envelope of mix. So in the top, one half cup or just one half there. And then on the bottom, we're gonna put a one. And now we're gonna go ahead and go on. So if you double a half a cup, then that means you're going to have one cup because two halves make a whole. And if you double one envelope, you'll have two. And we can just fill in the envelopes now because that's pretty easy, one, two, three, and four. And now we're gonna have to think. <laughs> so if you have one half, then you have one and one, I'm sorry, one half, then one, then one and one half, and then two. So now let's go ahead and use the ratios to see if they all have the same unit rate. So the first one, and I know these look a little weird because they're complex fractions, but one half divided by zero, I'm sorry, divided by one. So you wanna think of one half as 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 divided by one would be 0 0.5 because anything divided by one is itself. So that's 0 0.5. Now we're gonna look at the next one. One divided by two is going to equal a half because one divided by two is exactly one half. And I changed the color here to pink so that it would stand out more. So one divided by two gives you 0 0.5 again because that's one half. Now we're gonna do one and a half divided by three. All right, so now you're gonna see that I went ahead and did the rest of them. One and one half divided by three is one half. Two divided by four is of course one half as well. So they all simplify to 0 0.5. And here's just a, a really easy hint type tip. So I know some of this probably seems pretty self-explanatory, but when you're looking at a recipe, <coughs> excuse me, and it says for every one half cup of sugar, you'll have one envelope of mix, 
that's automatically going to be a proportional relationship because it's for every one of these, you get two of these, or for every one of these, you get seven of these. So that's pretty easy to figure out whether or not that's proportional. So not sure if I said this, but all of the ratios, um, when you divide one half divided by one, one divided by two, one and one half divided by three, and two divided by four, you get 0 0.5 for all of them. So all of the ratios between the two quantities can be simplified to 0 0.5. The amount of mix is proportional to the cups of sugar used. Go ahead and try the got it now. Pause the video and start. So now we're looking at the got it problem. And the first thing you wanted to do, because it said she started with $120, was to t take the 120 and then add the $20 deposit to it. So the first week she had $140. Do the same with the second week, she has 160, and then the same with the third week, she has 180. So then you should have simplified each one of those, and you would have gotten 140, 80, and 90. So obviously those are not the same. So the explanation you want is that no, the weeks to account balance ratios are not the same, so they are not proportional. All right, so now we're looking at textbook page 36, example four. It says the tables show um, shown represent the number of pages Martin and Gabriel read over time. Which set situation represents a proportional relationship between the time spent reading and the number of pages read? Explain. So the first thing that you need to do is you need to take each one of the ratios for the time periods and simplify them. As you can see for Martin's ratios, each one simplifies to 2 to 5. All the ratios are 2 to 5, so Martin's reading rate is proportional. Now when you're looking at Gabriel's, you're going to do the same thing. And as you can see with Gabriel's rates, 3 to 5 is already simplified, 4 to 10 will simplify to 2 to 5, and then 7, 15, 7 to 15 is simplified. So Gabriel's ratios are not the same, so his reading rate is not proportional. And now we have made it to the guided practice. So on your lined paper, you want to go ahead and write your name, date, and period, textbook page 36, and go ahead and do numbers 1, 2, and 3 on lined paper. I will see you in class.